Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, I am so excited because today you get to meet my friend, Emmy-nominated actress Kelly M. Jenbret. She's a native of Atlanta. That's where we met. But now she lives here in LA with her boo, her husband, Melvin Jackson Jr. Listen, you know Kelly from her Emmy-nominated performance in The Handmaid's Tale. And she's been in a slew of movies. You're just gonna have to read her bio, honey. She just works. She is a booking magnet. I'm talking Limetown. I'm talking Grandfathered. I'm talking her current show right now, which is um, the All-American Homecoming show on the CW Network. She's amazing. And when you talk about transparent, that's Kelly. Kelly's about her business. She is fun. She's sarcastic but she's so sweet. She's so down to earth and she's so giving. So that's why I'm really excited about you getting a chance to meet her and getting to hear her story. So enjoy this episode of Booking Magnet Magic and I'll see you on the next one. I am so excited. What you don't know is that me and Kelly both were singing to each other as we popped on the Zoom. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's just what people do. Kelly, you are here. I am Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. Before we before we hit record, just for those of you who are watching and listening, I was telling Kelly, I was like, wow, I have interviews of you from so many phases of your career. I'm going to have to like put them together and email them to you just so you can hear yourself. Please, please, <laughs> like seriously, please. Yes, like it, I found one from 2011. I had I used to have a podcast called Beyond the Shade, and it wasn't like the shade of the industry, though that was a good little pun there. But it was mostly about celebrating actresses of color. And then I interviewed you right, right when you found out you were uh, nominated for an Emmy for Ham The Handmaid's Tale, and now here we are. So I'm so excited for you all to experience Kelly, and um, she is a friend, but she's also, you, you're also just this beautiful light and what we have in common, I think out of many things is that you're not, you're not afraid to be open and share your journey in such a unique way. And that's why I wanted to invite you here. So uh, before you even wonder, all Kelly's links will be in the show notes. So you can connect with her and watch her on all the things because she's all over your TV. <laughs> So don't worry, that's there. But I want to get into it. You know, this is Booking Magnet Magic. And I really wanted to highlight what makes us all magnetic and what makes us all magical in these, in as we are artists in this journey. So I just want to know, because, and I don't really know, even though I know you, how did you really get started in the entertainment industry? Um, gosh, in the entertainment industry, the short answer is, I made up my mind and I moved out to California. Like, cause when I think about the entertainment industry, I think about my life out here and not so much about my life back home. So maybe I need to ask, well, how did you, how did you start? When did you, and how did you start acting? Maybe okay. Okay. Like, okay. So you, you were doing amazing, amazing work before California came into play. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think for me, though, just to kind of clarify, when I think entertainment industry, I think L.A., when I think about my craft, I think Atlanta. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I think home. I I'm think with you. I'm with you on that, industry. actually. You know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah. So I got started um, when I, my first vivid memory is being in the fifth grade and my teacher asked Mr. Hornsby, he asked if we wanted to put on a play and we did uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I got to play Charlie. Oh, um, yes, no. Yep. He asked, he was <laughs> like, well, do you want to change the name to Charlene? And I was like, no, I can play a boy and <laughs> fell in love with it then. And then my dad took me to see the five heartbeats. Oh, and, and I was like, oh my God. Oh. Yes. And I remember when it would come on TV, or maybe I had a, a copy of it, and I sat in front of the TV and literally wrote down word for word 
the lyrics to No Matter How Hard It Gets. Mm-hmm. And I would go around the house performing that. Um, and so I think that was my initial introduction to like, I like this. But it, along the way, there were uh, doubts. Like I never thought that acting at that time, I never thought that acting was a real job. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to be a lawyer who does hair on the side. <laughs> you know, like that, that person. Because that's real. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, like you think you're going to have time to do hair on hair. the side. <laughs> lawyer. Like. Clearly, you are a creative. <laughs> um, and then that transition to forensic psychology. Oh, like, wow. I'm, just, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. So I went to Xavier University in New Orleans for two years because I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a forensic psychologist. And then my second year in really getting into the major and seeing all of the science classes I was going to have to take, I was like, yeah. I think I'd much rather be one on TV than in real life. <laughs> so I transferred back home and got my degree in theater and then worked in upstate New York for a year, went back to Georgia, and then decided to leave to come out to California. And I've been oh, here ever since. I love that. You said, I'm still stuck on hair on the side. Yeah, yeah. Because you were like, I need an outlet. I need yes. after studying law all day. Duh. Correct. Like, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna help y'all with all, all that stuff, but like also come <laughs> sit in my chair. Let me do these braids right quick, like hook you up so that you look good. Right. When you go wow. to the judge. Duh. <laughs> I love hearing these other job stories. I don't know if you know this about me. I was going to go to, I got accepted to Columbia for print journalism. I was going to be a print journalist. No, I did not know that. I used to write for the, for a Tri-Cities, the high school I went to, I used to write for the the newspaper. And then Atlanta had a local, y'all, we met in Atlanta, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, Atlanta had a local newspaper for, for high school students called Vox. And it was written by high school students from around the city. And I was part of that staff of writers. I loved to write. And yeah. I was like, yeah, duh, that's what I'm doing. And yeah, mm-hmm. so that's so, I love that story. But yeah, like I'll play one on TV. Yeah. Um, so I remember you moved to LA um, around, do you remember what year that might've been? 2006. 2006, that's the year I went on tour with The Lion King. And I remember when I first came to LA the first time, you were you welcomed me with open arms into your apartment. You had a little cute apartment. I remember. I don't remember. I, I don't. Where was that? Because I didn't know LA at the time. What it, was in Bur- it was in Burbank. That was Burbank. I had no idea where I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to LA, you're like, uh, uh-huh. see, actors are in Burbank or Sherman Oaks Valley. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and I remember you just had this determination, and you just made you had made a decision. And that was very inspiring to me. I never had a chance to tell you that, but I, I'm that kind of person. My friends joke like, oh, Christine has made a decision. When Christine makes a decision, it's happening. Mm-hmm. And what I saw in you, you made a decision. And can you talk a little bit about what those first few years were like? You know, everybody has everybody has a different experience. And this isn't just about LA, living in LA, for those of you who are watching and listening. It is about when you decide to make a change and you step out on faith for the thing that you know you are built for, something greater. Um, Can you talk about what it took within you? What needed to shift within you to make that shift and step out on faith for this new venture, new adventure rather? Yeah, I think it took a lot of prayer and what you said, a lot of faith. Just like, okay, I, I I think I'm ready. And um, and I think there was just a little bit of, I don't know if you want to call it stupidity. Let's not <laughs> call it stupidity. <laughs> Let's call it something like fearlessness. Yes. <laughs> sure, it was fearlessness that was like, yeah, you can do it. But I will say before I came out here, I did a little research because I had mostly really only done theater in Atlanta. 
So I was like, I know I can do theater. Mm -hmm. So I began to research different like theater companies or upcoming plays and submitted my headshot to Mm -hmm. um, different theater companies or projects. So when I moved out here, I want to say like September, October of 2006, by November, I was in rehearsals for a play um, because I had sent my stuff. They called me in for an audition, booked that audition. um, And I think it was like December when we went up. It was only like a one night thing. Mm -hmm. But through that, I met an amazing director the director of that piece was uh is it was sue hamilton mm-hmm. and sue hamilton is she has played such an important role in my career out here um and like she's literally still my acting teacher today i had class earlier today um so yeah like i think prayer faith mm-hmm. fearlessness Slash stupidity <laughs> and preparation, like, like research. Yeah, it wasn't the whole "I'm gonna come here and I, I'll" because that's what I had it. I had that's what I had in me. I have to be honest. I was like, yeah. "Duh, I've been on Broadway. <laughs> Hello, I'm here." I'm here. <laughs> and it was like, so is everybody else. What right. you, what you don't, what you gonna do? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you know. I would say I came out with a little bit of that too, but not so much because I was like, well, I've done theater and I did do this one short film. So I was like, you know, I know, I know I'm going to have to put in work, but it was still like, but I'm good. So (laughs) it'll happen, you know, give it six months to a year. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Plus (laughs) let's add five, six more years to that. Like, yeah. When when you watch your younger self and even now, no, I want to sit, I want to stay in your younger self. I want to stay in younger Kelly. When the younger version of Kelly would watch movies, TV shows, go see a play, watch dancers. What was it that sparked you? What was the thing that those artists gave off? What would, what made you laser focus in on a singular performance? in your younger mind? That's such a great question. What immediate, there were two things that immediately popped in my head. I don't remember where I was in Atlanta. I don't know if it was like seven stages or like some little black box theater. And there was a performance. There was this this, uh, lady, she was doing a spoken word piece and they had like other performances, but I, I, I was just like, I was, like you said, so locked in on her. And I remember her coming up to me afterwards and she was like, thank you. Like, because I could tell you were, you, you could were feel there it. with me. And, and I don't think I could articulate it then, but what I think it was, was just, I felt like she was just living in the moment and she was just sharing. It wasn't, it wasn't a performance. She was inviting me in. So of course I was then drawn in like, Oh, you talking to me? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. uh Uh-huh. And then Tony Collette. Oh, I was was just watching her last night. And what? I was watching nightmare alley. Okay. The movie that's out. But anything, okay. anything Tony Collette, sign me up, but continue. Specifically, The Sixth Sense, when she's in the car with her son and he's confessing or talking to her about the, the I think it was like the bumblebee pin or something that kept missing, um, that kept being misplaced out of her room and she kept blaming him for taking it. And, you know, he was trying to tell her, like, it wasn't me, you know, and and then he, he was like, I, there's an accident up there. And she's looking like, oh, how do you know? You can, you can tell like what? And then he, he said, like, I can, I see dead people or whatever. He confessed the transition from 
her looking to kind of sitting back and, and like hearing what he said and then turning to him and, and looking at him. And then he starts talking about her mother and how um, he was like, the answer to the question is every day. And she, you know, she was just like, she got choked up and she was, she was really emotional. And he was like, what was the question? And she was like, do I make you proud? And it was just, it's, it's specifically that moment where I feel, I, I, I felt like, again, she's talking to me. Mm. She's just so very present. So I think what resonated then with me and still now is when someone is just present and not performing, but sharing, like inviting me in to this performance that I feel those two popped in my mind. And then one, one, one. Yes, last one. yes, please. I, I'm lo- I'm loving it. Ooh, Cause I, I just love, this is so juicy. Go ahead. James McAvoy in Split. Have you seen Split? No, writing it down. Please write it down. Um, he has like these 20 something different personalities and he's playing each one and each one is so specific, so distinct, so real. There's a moment where he is talking with his therapist and he's one of the he's one of the personalities and the therapist is like i know it's not you like what i can't remember the 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 personality's name she was like i know it's not you and he's like no what are you talking about like yeah it is me and she was like it's not like it, it's not you can can you can the real you come out there is the most subtle shift in his eyes, in his Mm. posture, and he becomes this other character. And I was just like, (laughs) mind blown. And now I'm like trying to pick my brains up off the floor and off the wall. Like I, I remember being on the plane, watching it again, literally going back to that moment, rewinding, rewinding. Cause I was like, what is that? Like, what is that thing? And it was, it, and it's just truth. Yeah. Like you're just telling the truth in every single moment. Yeah. Ooh, I wrote that down. That was me last night. Again, I was watching Nightmare Alley and, and I got stuck on Kate Blanchett. Mm. To the point, and at the time of this recording, y'all, it's it's February 2022. I don't know when you'll be watching or listening to this, but I really, my husband, bless his heart, he's not an actor. I'm like, do you see? Do you see this? He was like, uh, yeah, 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 I see it. I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I have to go back. I need to screen record this or I need to, I, I need to dissect it. And that is something that lights me up now. So this was your younger self. And I I feel if I'm hearing correctly, some of this has carried over into the adult version of you now, the things that draw you into characters. How have you borrowed, adopted, tried on some of these, the things that you were so drawn to? Have you had a chance and maybe some of the the roles that you've done so much, so many television shows and movies, have you had a chance to try some of these things on for yourself? Yeah, like truth. That's been that's been my biggest thing. Like, what is the truth? Mm-hmm. What's the truth that your that your character is telling? What is the truth that is the truth of the scene, the truth of the moment, the truth of the other characters? So that's that's generally my go-to question. What's the truth? And then like, even on my sides, I will write these things like tell the truth, just share, don't perform, play, you know, just to remind myself, like you want to invite people in. I love the moments where it's kind of like you just pull back the curtain and somebody is seeing this and it's like, oh, yeah, that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff resonates with me. So I feel like of those performances that I mentioned, 
what I take away the most is like, just tell the truth and don't perform. Mm, I hope y'all are taking that nugget. I hope you are picking up what Kelly is putting down because <laughs> something happens as, as we all know, when we can do the prep, we can break the script down and then I don't know if it's for, it's different for everybody, but when that, when you hit record on the self for the self tape or when there's an audience, this other entity can come out that has, was not invited. Hello, you were not invited here. And that can sometimes take over the, 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 the audition or even while you're on set. And it's almost like your representative showed up instead of you showing up mm-hmm. and instead of the character showing up. Oh, that's so, that's so juicy. Um, so I, I love hearing about what attracts us to people. So I'm going to ask you a very direct question, Kelly. What do you know for sure makes you magnetic? What do you know for sure that draws people to you? Ooh, okay, Christine. It's what we do it today. What do I know for sure draws people to me? I think it's my heart to serve, like mm. to, to give, to share. Um, and, and in that, it's just my ability, I think, to listen. You know, people, my mom heard somewhere someone say, too many times people listen to respond and not to understand. Correct, yeah. And so I think that's one of the things that I'll do, like I'll listen and I do my best not to um, respond with like, well, yeah, because when that happened to me and now that it's like, no, let me, let me listen. Let me make sure I understand what it is that you're saying. And if I have something that I feel like, yes, it can relate to that. Sure. We can get into that, but I think what it is and what I've been told is just my ability to just listen and and be there and my my heart to to serve. I love that. And when you we you know we all have these moments and if you haven't had one yet, dear listener viewer, you will one day. I know I've had these moments where I I leave an audition whether it's a producer session, virtual callback or just the first round of self tapes and I'd be like, ha, if you don't pick me, I don't know what you're doing because that right there was fire. (laughs) Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. What is it? I'm just whole, I've been living a whole moment of mine. <laughs> right? So when you have those moments, what was it about your performance? I know truth is one. But when you do, when you hit that upload or you leave that session, that producer session or that test, whether you, you don't know the outcome yet, what in you, what within you says, good job, Kelly. How do you know? How do you gauge that for yourself? Because a lot of actors, I hear it all the time. I have true questions. I don't know when I, I've done a good job. It's hard for me to even tell. How do you gauge that? Yeah, I, I think, because I'm, I'm thinking about like, how much of me showed up? I think mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. How much of Kelly showed up in the role? Like, yes, I am still doing this character, but I still have to bring a part of me in it. And when I feel like I've gone in the room from top to bottom and I was me, then I'm like, yeah, like that's what happened when I booked my first series regular role, like literally went in the room, you know, the casting director is introducing everyone. Normally 
I would have gone in the room like, thank you all so much. Thank you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. This time, I was still polite, but like, I was like, hey, yeah, nice <laughs> to meet you. All right. Cool. Y'all ready? Right. <laughs> I would ask, I would normally ask, can I use a chair? No. A chair up. Need, you're right. This is what I need. Yep. The ownership. Yeah. And it was just like, this is, this is me. Because you might be spending 12 hours, 16 hours with me on set. You need to know that I'm going to be cool spending majority of my life in yeah. this particular day with this person. So I think, I think that's the thing for me. When I know Kelly showed up, I enjoyed it. I didn't question myself. And even if I did, I responded or I said, I don't know. And right. then I kept moving like, yeah. I think that's that's the like when I when I feel like yeah. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that's so juicy, y'all. Show <laughs> I'm always preaching show that not honestly, that because I coach actors, I hear it from a different perspective too, outside of just my how I own deal with my own self. People actors hear all the time, be more of yourself, bring more of yourself to the room. And they're like, well. Oh, well, what does that mean? And I'm supposed to be the character, right? Well, who, who am I? And it just it brings up all these questions. So I just love hearing that because so many times we are the only ones who can tell ourselves good job. Mm -hmm. We may never get that feedback. If we don't book it, maybe we get pinned or in a veil. But if that doesn't happen, that does not negate the work you put in and the, mm -hmm. and the job that you did. So I find it it's so imperative to celebrate yourself, celebrate the work that you did yeah. and, and find the places that you did have the most fun and the things you got to try on for the first time. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, you have done um, how many series regular roles by now at this, at the time of this recording? At the time of this, I love that. At the time of this <laughs> recording, <laughs> um, grandfather, Manhunt and Homecoming, three. Okay. So this is a big question I get all the time. Are you the perfect person to ask? What for you was the shift in making that transition? So a lot of times I get actors ask me, well, how do how do you prep differently from for a co-star to a guest star? From guest star to series regular. And my whole thing is like, I don't change my approach. Like I need still need to know who this person is. And I may only have one page for this co-star versus having 16 for the series regular, but there's a lot of questions I need to, to ask and answer for myself. And sometimes I, I like to say like a series regular is like, I like to say it like this. Imagine you're invited to a Thanksgiving dinner. The difference between the co-star and the series regular is co-star, they like, depending on the co-star, not all, but some, I'm like, you know, girl, just, if you could just bring the cups. Just bring the cups. We need some cups. Mm -hmm. Versus the series regular. You're hosting the dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need, you're making all the, all the plates, all the sides. Like you're telling me what's on the menu. You're creating this character from the Ruta to the Tuta. Like, and of course this uh, place is in between, but for you, what was the shift? And even now, as you get more auditions for a series, regular roles, is, was there a shift that you can pinpoint in your approach that had to elevate or change or what's your approach there? Well, the thing that pops to mind is my mindset. Oh, come on. So I remember when I booked my first co-star role. So again, I moved out here in 2006, booked my first co-star role in 2013. Did y'all hear that? And, and Kelly, I assure you, was not sitting at home just waiting. Okay, y'all? I just want to say that in case you're wondering. That was not what she was doing. I was not. Um, <laughs> trust me. I was not. Um, but book my first co-star in 2013, Happy Endings. That man bought you this dress. 2006 to 2013. And scene. <laughs> then my team said, after my first co-star role, all right, well, we're done with co-stars. 
And I was like, you like, um, well, so, so <laughs> when you mean done, you mean like done with, with this one? Cause yes, we're, we are done with that one, <laughs> but like this, the way it's supposed to go, you know, I'm supposed to have like 17 co-stars and then I move to 12 guest stars and then I'll do about eight recurring <laughs> and then I'll work my way to series regular. <laughs> And so my team introduced a completely different mindset of like, so why? Why do you need to do that? Who Who said said? you got to follow those rules? Who said? And so I think for me, it was my mindset had to change that you can do this. As long as you continue to prepare and put in the work. You can do it. That can be your last co-star. And she and. My my female agent at the time who since retired, Miss Judy Page, she was like, now if you if you just need money, because bills still gotta be paid, we'll right. send you out on a co-star and you can book this co-star. But like we we see the trajectory of your career, where we want you to go. And you have to teach this industry how to see you. Mm-hmm. And if you are still in the mindset of co-star, 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 co-star. A few more co-stars, and then I'll work my way up to guest star, guest star, guest star, guest star. And then I'll, you know what I mean? Like, what can we what can we do with that? So yeah, my m- mindset was the biggest shift. Like, I belong here. I remember when I when I did uh all day and a night. Oh, that was so Wright. good. That was ooh. girl. Jeffrey. That alone. That alone. And Ashton Sanders, who and I Ashton Sanders, who I was in his first movie. You know, I, I oh, can oh, tell the story. Love, love him, love them both. And I remember there was a sh- scene that we shot. I don't think it made it. It didn't make it into the final cut. But I was sitting. I had just given birth to our son, Ashton, and well, played by Ashton Quick. <laughs> I'm Ashton's mother. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I had given birth to our son. And, you know, Jeffrey was holding this baby doll, not a real baby, holding this baby doll. And it was just like, it was a, he walked from this side of the bed around the room to the other side. And it was a master class in like transparency and vulnerability and all this stuff. And I'm just getting caught up and I'm like, Snap out of it, Kelly. You're in the movie with him. You belong here too. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was getting to that point to where it's like, and not coming from that place where, you know, like, I'm here, please. But like. No, we are peers. We are peers and we both did the work to get to this, to, to get on set at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And not, you know going from this like I'm just I'm so glad to so glad to be here yeah shrinking down into myself like I don't even know what that is but like yeah my mindset and and recognizing I belong here too Ooh, I can already tell you when we edit this that clip this this little section right here is gonna be the teaser because that is powerful and I'm always preaching that because that made me, ooh, that really made me emotional just because so many, that is always the biggest block to our breakthrough in every area of our life. Mm-hmm. You know, we we share a mentor and friend in Freddie Hendricks, and he talks about, you know, if you if you if you don't fully love yourself, how can you fully love your craft? Mm-hmm. Right. And and how can you fully show up as as an actor? You know, and that's something I want to keep pouring into our community is self-love. And what I'm hearing also here, Kelly, is in the shift from the question I asked about the shift from co-star to series regulars, you said mindset, but I'm also hearing worthiness Mm -hmm. and understanding that I am worthy, I am necessary, and I belong here and I deserve it. (laughs) And I think, I think that is huge and, and so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
because I see that a lot. And if you're listening and watching and your heart's starting to pump, I know we're talking to you because so much of the self-sabotage that happens with you and auditions, not you, Kelly, but you who is listening and watching, that self-sabotage, that procrastination, waiting to the last minute to get those auditions in. And when you get to set, letting that voice chatter take over. I'm not going to remember my lines. Oh my gosh, being too, so starstruck, you, you can't fully perform. You belong. <laughs> you were chosen. You were chosen. First of all, you, you are here on this planet in this human form. You were chosen on a whole nother level. Right. So, oh, I love that. You know, you, and you've been very open already about sharing 2006 to 2013. I think I'm not going to forget that. I think that almost, almost should be a t-shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. As we know, this career is not for the faint of heart. I, as I talk to more and more artists, you got to love it. If you are only in this industry, only for the check or only for the fame, you may need to reevaluate some things because this career it can be like an emotional roller coaster. It's filled with ebbs and flows. So, Kelly, can you talk a little bit about you? Like, you and I'm so excited for you all to follow Kelly uh, after you watch this interview. She, she does something called Transparency Tuesday. If you happen to catch it, it's something that a lot of artists, a lot of people, don't do. We we see the Insta scroll. And everybody's life is fabulous, 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 right? And I, <laughs> and I try to do my job and contribute and just be open and genuine, you know, and be myself as much as possible. And what I, that's what I love about your Transparency Tuesday. Since it'll be in her car, it'll be in her house. And what tools do you have in place? Because I, I like my listeners to have tangible tools. What tools do you have in place? for the ebbs and flows of this business when you're on a you're on a series today and next year you might not be or it's a lull for a few months money money might be tight or money might be in, you know how what tools do you have in place to keep good mental health and to sustain and to continue this another day such a great question i was looking for my book but it's over there um the good the good word the Bible, like my relationship with God. When I tell you, I don't find any, like, I don't, I don't expect my career, my craft to give me anything. I don't find my joy. I don't find my love. I don't find my happiness. I don't find my peace. I don't find any of those things in this career because it is so up and down. And if I find my peace or my joy in this career, then what happens when the thing that brings me peace or brings me happiness is gone? What I know that doesn't change, that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, is the God I serve. Mm. And so if I'm rooted and grounded in that, then there can be chaos happening all around me, chaos in that oh my God, I'm so busy because I booked something. Or, oh my God, I haven't booked anything. All of that chaos, I can still be rooted, grounded, and have peace no matter what happens. And because it's happened, of course, before 2017, um, I when I did The Handmaid's Tale, October 2017, November, December, January, February came, hadn't booked anything, March, nothing. And I'm like, oh my God, well, bills still got to be paid. So I was like, great, I'm going to get a job. I saw Azusa uh, University had a position open for a professor. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And had so much peace about it. Whereas before I would have been panicking, like, oh my God, I got to get a day job. Like, this is really what I want to do. And if I'm not doing this, then I'm not successful. I'm not, su- you know, like what is, nope, redefine success. My, mm-hmm. my success is not wrapped up in whether I book something or not. My success is, were you a good servant today? Mm. Did you share today? Did you give today? Did you forgive today? Did you do all of those things today? Then great, you were successful. Not like, 
oh, because you you booked this thing, now you are successful. You are series regular, so you got it. Nah, because when that goes away, then who am I? Yes. And so yes. that's for me, my relationship with with God, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit that lives in me is what sustains me no matter what. So that if it does come and I don't have a job for six months, because that's what happened between Handmaid's Tale and, and the Emmy nomination, like it went from nothing to like, oh my God, all of this stuff happening at once. I'm still going to be grounded. Mm. Oh, that's so good. So I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm sitting here so excited for everyone who is watching and listening this, listening to this, because it's so easy to wrap ourselves up into, in our, in our identity mm-hmm. into this. Yes, this is a gift we have. And yes, this is the industry that we're in. But if this is all that makes us who we are, then what, when we're not working, it makes us, there's so much to be questioned after that. Yeah. Oh, oh. And you know, me, what you should know is Kelly and I, we, we enjoy good food and lights on and bills paid. Um, so we don't play the struggling broke actor thing. Like, yeah, just so you know, <laughs> like, I, I not about like, that life. Never, never. I'm not going to be living out of my car. What? No, I want to take a shower <laughs> in my own place. I want to sleep in my own bed. Like, so if I need to go do a job, I I worked marketing and promotions in Atlanta. Did that when I moved out here. You sure did. I, I, I auditioned and booked my first series regular role and was still working my marketing job from home. <laughs> and Melvin was like, well, babe, it's time to let go. It's not. I don't know if this show going to get picked up. Like, that part, that part. I don't know. So, but what I do know is that I got this job. You sure do. And guess what? Kelly got me a couple jobs doing that marketing when I came to LA the first time and I was sure happy to take it. Okay. Listen, if you know that there's no shame at all for providing for yourself, life provision is serious. Mm-hmm. And the level and the look, the older you get, quality of life to me, Kelly, is everything. Yeah. I need my peace. I need the things that I need to make to, for my own self-care, my mental health, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure I have that, whether it comes through the check of an acting gig or not, mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure that's in place for me. Okay. So don't, you know, have shame around having to have another way to supplement your life. I just, and I think we're both making that very clear. Mm -hmm. Um, We're getting ready to wrap and this has been oh so juicy. Please y'all download this, rewind it, save it, whatever you need to do for this. And I've asked this to everybody I've interviewed because I, I know my audience so well at this point. I know I have a bulk of my audience who are seasoned. They've been in the industry like you 15 plus years. And I know we have some people who are brand brand, as I call brand Nubians who are just starting out eager and maybe still frustrated because they, they're, they're in their 2006 moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my seasoned actors, maybe they've hit a plateau. Maybe they were working for a while and it's just been quiet for whatever reason. If you could pour something in to these people at this moment, just if they're, because they're about to throw in the towel or they're wondering if they are even good enough, should, why should they, should they even be doing this? What would you say to that person right now? Ooh, know your why. Know why you are pursuing this craft. And if it is because you want to be famous or because you want to make a lot of money, then understand the potential limitations that that places on you and the frustrations that that comes with. And then don't be afraid to redefine things for yourself. We get so stuck in like, well, this is what I said. Stuff changes. And so much of this industry is out of our control. Like, you just 
it's so much stuff that's out of our control and so much stuff that we will never even know. You don't know why you didn't book that role. You don't know why you why you did book the role, the specifics behind it. Like there are so many unknowns that are around us. So the more that you can know about yourself, about why you are pursuing this and hold on to that and make sure that is something that is not predicated upon whether you book something or not. That's what fame is predicated on. That's what making money in this industry is predicated on. What is it that you can control that's your why? And redefine that if you need to and hold on to that. And pray, honey, pray. Pray <laughs> and reach out. Don't be sitting at home crying, not reaching out to people. Reach out because yeah. there are other actors, there are other people who are struggling as well. And then serve, go volunteer. Yes. Give back to someone else. And then that'll help pull you out of your own funk and what it is that you have going going on or not going on. Like understand, this is not the end all be all. It's just, it's not. Yeah. Have, as my acting teacher says, her motto is have fun or quit. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I hope you all receive all of this with the love intended. Remember that you have a gift that the world needs to see and it's different. You know, I wanted to do this series because each and every one of us has something that is magical and magnetic within us. And it's gonna look different on you because you are just so special, one of a kind, wonderful. So just don't forget that too. And if, if it's not meant for you to be in this, you know how many casting directors and agents used to be actors? They're like, I couldn't do that. I became a casting director. <laughs> I became a producer because it's that's hard, right? So there's no shame in that either. You may find that you may have a, a, a love and a different part of this industry that still keeps you connected. Wow, Kelly, I'm so proud and happy to call you friend. Thank you for being you. Thank you for your light, your sarcastic humor, which I love. I haven't had a chance to get some of that lately. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, again, we are gonna have all the links to all things Kelly in the show notes so you can catch her on your on your TV and online. Um, Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you all for watching or listening to Booking Magnet Magic. Be sure to tune in to the next episode to keep getting inspired. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.